from seed to sweetness, witness the captivating life cycle of stevia. Welcome to the life cycle of stevia sweetener. Before that, do you know that this stevia plant is 350 times more sweeter than sugar, yet more healthier? Today, 5 billion people use stevia in their foods and beverage around the globe. About 3 leaves can replace 25% of the calories in one glass of soda. Let's jump into the life cycle of stevia sweetener. First, we have the introduction. What is stevia all about? Next, the life cycle of five stages of stevia sweetener life cycle processes. Next, the impact on how stevia production impact the environment. And lastly, sustainability of stevia compared in ID sugar. So, what is stevia? Stevia is a sweetener from natural sources which used to reduce the sugar and calories in some of drinks or food. It also is scientifically known as RA60. Where is stevia grown? Stevia is a plant in the chrysanthemum family native to Paraguay and its leaf is a unique source of natural sweetness. It is grown across the country of South America, Africa, China, and US. In year 1899, the stevia plant was first discovered by indigenous people in South America. The stevia plant was first scientifically recorded as Importorium ribaudianum by Swiss botanist Moises Santiago de Botani in Paraguay. In 1971, the first commercial use of stevia sweetener in foods in Japan. And by year 1984, China began cultivating stevia plants in their country. Meanwhile, in year 2008, high purity stevia leaf extract was generally recognized as safe according to the US FDA requirements. Is approved for the use in beverages in the US. And in year 2011, the European Food Safety Authority approved the use of stevioglycosides as a sweetener in foods and beverages. And today, 5 billion people around the globe enjoy stevia. Now, let's get into the 5 stages of stevia sweetening and life cycle. First, we have the farming of stevia. Second, harvesting of stevia. Third, extraction of stevia. Fourth, purification. And fifth, end of life of stevia. First, the seedling propagation, where stevia seedlings are grown in a greenhouse for 60 days. Seedlings are grown in body stream trays filled with compost and soil with a mechanical device. Then seedlings are topped twice with a long mover through pomo leaf growth. The greenhouse has a long lifetime and is used for five cycles of stevia propagation. Second is field cultivation, where stevia leaves are harvested, taking 16 hours per hectare. The average yield is 3.6 tons per hectare per year with crop residues brought back to the land, emissions of greenhouse gases and heavy metals from fertilizer used and crop residues are modeled using agri footprint 6 methodology. Third is leaf extraction where leaves are cleaned in a zigzag cleaner which separates them from stems and other falling material. Stevia glycosides are the sweetest molecules found in the stevia. The stevia plant's sweet molecules are extracted by stepping on its dry leaves in water, much like a tea. The fourth is stevia purification, where the liquid is filtered to remove plant debris. The extract is refined with water or and food 
grate alcohol followed by drying. Further purify using ethanol to crystallize the glycoside molecules. Lastly, the fifth end of life, which the resulting product is packaged in plastic bags and cardboard box for shipping to customers and transport out of the extraction factory. Then the product currently accessible as an ingredient in meals and beverages. Let's get to know the environmental impact of stevia sutina. There are four environmental impact categories throughout the life cycle of stevia sutina. The four categories environmental impact are global warming, freshwater eutrophication, land use and water consumption. Global warming, which the total global warming potential for the whole life cycle is 20.25 kg carbon dioxide equivalent, which the main sources of impact are from the field cultivation and the air emissions from fertilizer and crop residues, dyes are used to power the tractor, electricity for drying the leaf. Meanwhile, the extraction of stevia also contributes to the global warming, which from the free lorry and ship transport from processing facility to extraction factory, production of ethanol from fermentation use in purification, and lastly, and emissions from waste and leaf matter. Next is the freshwater eutrophication, which the total freshwater eutrophication across the life cycle which contribute to the main sources of the impact is the fuel production phases on the consumption of the electricity, extraction of stevia from the ethanol production and transportation, and processing which the consumption of electricity including machinery. Next one is the land use, which the total land use across the whole life cycle is 37.85 meters square pro equivalent and the main source of the impact is from the field cultivation, extraction and purification of stevia from the production of ethanol and the skill in favor of field cultivation is due to the relatively low yield of stevia leaf per hectare per year. Lastly is the water consumption which the total water consumption for the whole life cycle that comes from the main source of the impact is from the field production due to the irrigation of stevia plants and extraction of stevia from the production of ethanol. However, within the extraction phase, some of the water used is considered return to environment through wastewater treatment. Now, let's get to know the sustainability of stevia sweetener than other sugar. It is known that stevia produces 92% lower water footprint than beet sugar and cane sugar. And stevia may produce as little as 10% greenhouse gas emissions of sugar while still providing the same level of sweetness. From the stevia production, it is known that 82% reduction in carbon footprint compared with beet sugar and 64% reduction compared with cane sugar.